Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy. In this video, we'll introduce Cournot duopoly, and we'll expand upon the idea of underlining best responses in a matrix game to finding best response functions in a game of normal form. Finally, we'll use the best response functions in Cournot duopoly to find the Nash equilibrium of this game. We're going to use Cournot duopoly to generalize the idea of underlining best responses in matrix games to finding best response functions in normal form games. As we discussed in class, Cournot duopoly is perhaps the earliest use of formal mathematics to study an economic question, namely the nature of competition between two firms, and also perhaps the earliest reference to the idea now known as Nash equilibrium. It's therefore of both economic and historical importance. There is a link to an English translation of Cournot's book in the description box if you want to take a look at Cournot's own expression of the duopoly that now bears his name. Here's a 21st century expression of Cournot's model for our purposes, which we saw briefly when we used it as an example of a game in normal form. From a modeling standpoint, we are interested in duopoly competition, so everything else about the game is as simple as possible. The firms have constant average and marginal cost, and they produce exactly the same good. The only moving part is each firm's output decision. We want to find the Nash equilibrium of this game, i.e. quantities that constitute mutual best responses. Cournot was interested in comparing these quantities to the output of a monopolist in the same market. Like Cournot, we will answer this question after we find the Nash equilibrium quantities. I've moved our Cournot model to the left side of the screen. Below that is a list of the four steps we will take to find the Nash equilibrium quantities in this game. We'll execute each of these steps on the right side of the screen. As in our video about normal form, we'll write down each firm's profit function, because firms are profit maximizing. The convention is to use little pi for profit, since we have already used p for price. Since each firm has constant average and marginal cost, each firm's profit is its profit per unit, price minus cost, multiplied by its chosen quantity. Replace big P of big Q with the market demand function 130 minus big Q, and replace C1 with firm 1's constant average and marginal cost of production, 10. Replace big Q with little q1 plus little q2. After some algebra, obtain little pi of q1 and q2 equals 120 minus q1 minus q2, all times q1. We could repeat this process for firm 2's profit function, but since firms 1 and 2 have identical cost functions, we can simply exchange the places of q1 and q2. But be alert, the problem set contains a problem in which the firms have different costs, so this trick cannot be used. After we complete each step, I'll keep the results of that step at the top of the right side of the screen and continue the next step below those results. Now that we know the firm's profit functions, we need to write down the firm's respective profit maximization problems. We'll write down firm 1's problem first. Firm 1 chooses q1 star which maximizes its profit. The q1 under the argmax indicates that firm 1 chooses q1 but does not choose q2. We'll replace pi1 of q1 q2 with the expression we found in step 1. Now we'll write down firm 2's problem. Firm 2 chooses q2 star which maximizes its profit. The q2 under the argmax indicates that firm 2 chooses q2, but does not choose q1. We'll replace pi2 of q1 q2 with the expression we found in step 1. Here in step 3, we'll solve the profit maximization problems from step 2. Step 3 is the parallel of underlining best responses in a matrix game. We can't write down a matrix here because each player has infinitely many strategies. However, we can use the same idea as underlining. We want to record firm 1's best response to each of firm 2's strategies. Solving firm 1's problem will yield firm 1's best response function, an expression for firm 1's profit maximizing quantity q1 star as a function of firm 2's output q2. One nice thing here is that we only have to find one best response function for each firm. Finding a firm's best response function is the equivalent of doing all of its underlining at once. To find q1 star, we differentiate firm 1's profit function with respect to q1 
and set the resulting partial derivative equal to zero. As noted in our video about calculus, I like to differentiate with the product rule instead of expanding the profit function and then differentiating. That's purely my personal preference, and for little order of operations things, you should use whichever order you prefer. Now we need several lines of algebra to solve for q1 star, which equals 120 minus q2 all over 2. Next, we need to find firm 2's best response function. We could solve firm 2's problem from step 2, just as we solved firm 1's problem. However, since the firms in this particular Cournot model have the same cost functions, we will instead find firm 2's best response function by appealing to symmetry and exchanging the places of q1 and q2 in firm 1's best response function. Now that we've found both firm's best response functions, the logical equivalent of underlining all of the best responses, we find the Nash equilibrium by solving the best response functions simultaneously, the logical equivalent of seeing which square or squares have both payoffs underlined. We change q1 and q2 to q1 star and q2 star, since Nash equilibrium occurs when both firms maximize their respective profits simultaneously. We could substitute one best response function into the other and solve, but instead we'll appeal to symmetry one last time. Since the firms have identical cost functions, their Nash equilibrium quantities must be the same, so we can simply replace q2 star with q1 star and solve for q1 star in one of these equations. With some algebra, we find q1 star is equal to 40. Symmetry tells us q2 star is also equal to 40. The Nash equilibrium of our Cournot duopoly is q1 star equals 40 and q2 star equals 40. Cournot, after deriving conditions describing the Nash equilibrium quantities, goes on to compare his results to the conditions describing the output of a monopolist in the same market. In our setting, the monopoly quantity is 60. Cournot shows that the duopolist's combined output exceeds the output of a monopolist and concludes that, quote, as everyone believes without any analysis, end quote, competition reduces the market price. That belief may be, but Cournot deserves credit for providing something stronger than belief upon which we can rely. Thanks so much for watching this video about Cournot duopoly and its Nash equilibrium. In the next video, we'll revisit iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. We will show that it can be used in games of normal form, and we will use it to find the Nash equilibrium of Cournot duopoly.